Oh, hi there, it's the Don with the Don Tech. And today I wanted to talk to you about my personal experiences from upgrading my machine from a 6600K i5 to an i7-6700K, all on this editing beauty behind me. When I wanted to do this build, I was planning on getting an office upgrade machine for myself, kind of before I started to get into YouTube before I knew that I wanted to get into YouTube. And so the i7 at that point was around $390 to $450, depending on the day. And it was just a little bit more money than what I wanted to spend at that point. So I settled and got the i5 6600K for around $250. And then I waited and waited and waited. And then finally, around November, Black Friday-ish, the processor, the i7, came to around $300. And at this point, it was gonna be a great thing for me to upgrade because I had made the decision to go ahead and make YouTube videos, so I was doing editing more regularly, and the machine behind me running on that i5 was great, but I could always have gotten better performance out of it by getting that i7. And also, this isn't just a willy-nilly $300 upgrade and then I set the $250 processor somewhere, so I've spent over $500 in processors. It's really that the i5 now is gonna be going into an upcoming office build computer. So that office upgrade will have that i5 along with some other new parts, and this machine will be able to be the workhorse of the editing computer with that i7. There are some overall benefits to upgrading processors in just the general scheme of things, even though these are pretty similar on paper. They both are quad core, but the i7 runs at 4 gigahertz and the i5 is going to run at 3.5 gigahertz. Alongside that, the i7 has eight threads instead of just four and also has a little bit more level three cache instead of the i5. And while both of these processors are the K version, which means they are unlocked and can be overclocked, I have no current intentions of overclocking. Now, if the need comes up and I wanna do the upgrades and I wanna overclock, I definitely will because I have the custom water loop behind me and I'll definitely get some benchmarks to see how much better the overclock is versus when it was just stock. So will all those things justify the upgrade itself? Will all of that make it so I'm more productive? We'll find out at the end of this video because I'm gonna show you how to upgrade the processor first and then what my results were. So when you're gonna be going through and upgrading any piece of equipment in your computer, you have to first access it. And for me, with my wall-mounted case, it's very simple because I just have the four screws that are holding the acrylic panel in. I take those out and then I have access to everything. But if I wanted to do anything more advanced, I would have to take it off the wall. So fortunately with this upgrade, I can do everything while it's still on the wall. So after the actual removal of the acrylic panel itself, I had to go through and remove the old processor. And starting by removing the actual heat sink or CPU block that I had. My Thermaltake custom water cooling loop has four screws and four washers and I remove them in a cross pattern. Then I'm gonna carefully remove the heat sink itself. With the CPU exposed, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the existing thermal paste, starting with a paper towel and then followed with some isopropyl alcohol. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the base of the CPU block. When you're gonna remove the CPU, you wanna carefully disengage the locking arm and lift the metal plate upward. This will expose the processor and allow it to come out. In my case, since my case is currently on the wall, I'm holding the processor down so it does not fall out. Then I'll simply put thermal paste on the new 6700K and do the exact opposite of what I just done by again lifting the metal plate, carefully placing the processor where it needs to go, and then locking the arm back underneath to secure the processor in place. With that completed, it's now time to put the CPU heatsink back on and use any of the hardware that you had when you went ahead and took everything off, such the washers and thumbscrews in my case, and then I'm gonna be turning the computer back on to make sure it boots. And once we have success in the boot and the BIOS, we will go on to the benchmarks. The three primary benchmarks I'm gonna be running today are gonna to be Cinebench for just the overall benching performance, 3D Mark for the general system performance, and then my own render setting tests to see how the machine actually performs in the real world scenarios and my exact use of the machine. I'm not gonna focus on any gaming or FPS testing at this point because since my displays are both 1080p and I've got a 1070 graphics card in there, I'm not gonna have a problem maxing out on almost any processor of the current generation running at uh, 60 frames and everything. But if I had an i3 dual core, really low gigahertz clock, then yeah, you're gonna have problems, but that's not what this video is about. Starting with Cinebench, you can already see that there is a much higher score, but not only is it a higher score, it's surprisingly low on how the 6600K performed. Is there really that much of a difference between these two processors? I mean, I know that that's something that, yeah, it's an upgrade, but geez, those numbers are pretty, pretty crazy. Following it up with 3D Mark, it takes a few more things into effect. Like I said, it's kind of a general gaming sort of system stress to see where it's at, but we can see that the 6700K is still reigning supreme by giving some great results. And this test ranks just below the 4K gaming PC, which sits right around 17,000 
for the score. And now we move on to the real world benefits, the primary purpose of this machine, and that's gonna be editing. So with the camera that I'm using now, I had shot video in 4K natively. And so I took that 4K video and I spliced 10 minutes out of that video. And what I did is I took the presets from Adobe Premiere of the 1080p settings for downscaling and then for the 4K native settings, and I ran the video render test with that exact content. And I ran it both those times on both processors. I also made sure that use maximum render quality was checked in both of those tests. Whoa, are those numbers correct? It's nearly cutting in half the time that it takes to render both types of content. If I'm shooting in 1080p, that's gonna be less than eight minutes to render. And if I'm shooting in 4K, that's less than 20 minutes to render. And this is where the upgrade truly pops. So now it's on to the conclusion as to whether or not I would recommend this upgrade and what it means to me and you. So as to be expected, the 6700K outperformed the 6600K in every single avenue. I mean, that wasn't really a, this video isn't meant to be, is the 6700K better than the 6600K? Because we know the answer to that is yes, duh, it's, it's better. But it was to show the intrinsic value of how much better is it and is it something that you should even consider doing if you're doing your own build? And I do apologize for not showing any gaming FPS or anything like that, but as I mentioned before, it's not gonna be something that you're gonna really notice a big difference of. And if you're going for 4K gaming anyway, you probably have the money to spare to get an i7. For me, this upgrade was definitely worth it. It cost me 50 extra dollars technically on top of what I spent for the 6600K to get the 6700K. And it's going to allow me to use the 6600K i5 in an upcoming office build. So I get to reuse the old equipment that I already had. It doesn't have to sit somewhere in a corner collecting dust. And it's something where I see the immediate benefits of what I'm doing with the content that I'm gonna be rendering. So I'm very excited to see how quickly these things will render. And check in the description below because I'm gonna time how long it takes to render this video in seconds and I'll put it down in the description as well. Because obviously I can't bench how long it's gonna take to render this video during this video. And now it comes down to whether or not you should do the upgrade or if you should consider the 6600K over the 6700K. And it's just gonna come down to really how much your budget is. Because the difference in $50 all the way up to $80 to $100 for the i7 over the i5 may not be worth it, especially if you can put that money into more RAM, a better SSD, or even a better graphics card. So those are the results. That's the conclusion of this video. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't like it, give it a dislike. If you have any questions about any hardware or if you're doing a build or you just want general advice, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them timely so you can get some good advice as to what to do with an upcoming build. And I appreciate you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, the Don's got your back.